Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi everybody, so if you're in the market for a new Android smartphone, you may well be considering whether it's worth going entry level with a phone like the Moto E 4G second generation, or whether it's worth spending the extra cash on a phone like the Moto X Play edition. With the Moto E going for about £100 in the UK and about $100 in the US, and the Moto X Play going for £270 in the UK, and will probably go for about $350 when it's released in the US, the question is, what do you get for your extra money and is it worth it? Let's start off with the obvious, screen size and resolution. The Moto E has a 4.5 inch screen with a 540x960 display versus the Moto X Play's 5.5 inch 1080x1920 display. As you can see, the X Play is considerably larger, especially in this rugged case. But you know, maybe perhaps you like the smaller form factor. The colours and sharpness are okay on both phones. And sure, the videos look better on the X Play, but the Moto E does okay for such a budget offering. Next up is battery and battery life. Where we start to see the difference, start to make their mark. The E has a 2390 milliamp hour battery, which serves the slower processor and simpler screen okay for most of the day, but the Moto X Play with its 3630 milliamp hour battery is not only head and shoulders above the E, it's significantly better than most other smartphones out there. Motorola have designed the X-Play to really see you right through the day, and trust me, this phone definitely does. Let's talk about cameras, front and back. And this is perhaps another unfair comparison, with the Moto E sporting a 5 megapixel main camera with no flash, and a measly VGA camera that's 640x480 on the screen side. Now, the Moto X Play has a 21 megapixel main camera with a flash 2 and a 5 megapixel selfie camera, both capable of shooting 1080p HD video. Both main cameras perform well in sunny conditions, with the Moto X Play giving very good results indeed for a phone. And I was particularly impressed with the video. But again, the Moto E takes perfectly acceptable snaps with its main camera in good light, but the selfie camera is pretty poor, I've got to say. Now, how about the processes? As you'd expect, the Moto E has a budget Snapdragon 410 versus the Moto X pl plays Snapdragon 16, <coughs> excuse me, 615, but it's horses for courses, and the Moto E has less pixels to push around, so it doesn't need as much horsepower, so it's still quite a snappy phone, and only starts to lag if you've got loads of apps open and maybe a few too many installed, which brings us on to nicely, memory. A crucial part of the makeup of any smartphone, the Moto E has 1GB of RAM, which is quite small, and it's backed up with 8GB of onboard storage, which you can flesh out to 32GB if you add an SD card. The Moto X Play packs 2GB of RAM, and my version has an additional 16GB of onboard storage, with the ability to add up to 128GB via SD card. This makes the Moto X Play quite a bit faster, but it really depends on what you want to be using your phone for. If you're a power user, you're probably not going to be buying the E anyway. And Gmail, Facebook, Messenger, WhatsApp, and all the bread and butter apps run fine on that phone. Perhaps if you're a heavy gamer or use hundreds of different apps, then the Moto X Play definitely has the advantage. Finally, real world use. I've used both of these phones as my daily driver for about two weeks each, starting with the Moto E. In fact, I bought the Moto X Play because I was so impressed with Motorola's almost pure edition of Android on the E, but I wanted a phone with a bigger screen, better camera, and longer battery life. Remember that the phone I had before was the HTC One Max, a beast of a phablet that was amazing, but I still felt that the Moto E was feasible as a smartphone as long as you didn't push it too hard in terms of installing apps or burning through the battery. The Moto X Play is now my main phone, and I'm so happy with it. I love the big display, the camera is good, and the battery life outstanding. The Moto X Play has handled everything I've thrown at it so far, and come back for more. So I actually think this may be the best phone available right now, of any make, of any model, period. In conclusion, I've got to say that comparing these two phones isn't really fair. One costs almost three times the amount of the other. But I guess the question is, can you see that extra money in the more expensive phone, the Moto X Play, compared to the Moto E? And the answer, of course, is yes. I think that maybe the Moto X Play could be the perfect smartphone for real-world use. It's got a great big screen, a powerful enough processor, and memory to handle the apps you could throw at it, and has a good camera, front and back. 
but the killer feature for me has to be that battery. Combine the 3630 milliamp hour battery with a sensible 1080p screen and again sensible Snapdragon 615 processor and you've got a high performance smartphone that will truly last you from dawn to dusk. You will not have to think about a charger when using this phone. The battery will last from when you get up to when you go to bed, which I absolutely love. Don't think, however, that I'm writing the Moto E off. This is a phone built very well to its budget. If the Moto E is what you can afford, then what you're getting is a highly competent smartphone that's a good size, has an okay battery and an okay main camera if a disappointed screen side one. Both phones benefit from Motorola's refusal to clutter up Android with unnecessary add-ons and bloatware, which is highly commendable and means that you get almost the pure Google Android experience. So, which phone to get? If you've got the budget, go the Moto X Play. It may not be as hyped as the Pure Edition, but the Play will keep going long after the flagship phones have died because their batteries aren't big enough to handle their quad HD displays and overcooked processors. If you're on a limited budget, go with the Moto E. It's a great phone, and as long as you're aware of its limitations, it'll stand you in good stead. That's enough from me. If you've enjoyed the video, please subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.